What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can install PS4 game updates via a USB drive. And this works completely offline, does not require a jailbreak or any kind of hack whatsoever. You can do this on a normal PS4, on any firmware basically, and you can install PS4 game updates via a USB drive completely offline without connecting to PSN or Sony servers or anything like that. Now, obviously, this is very useful if you can't connect to the internet on your PS4 because you can install the updates via a USB drive. But even if you can connect to the internet on your PS4 on, say, the latest firmware, Sony only allows you to download the very latest patch available for the game. It doesn't let you install any older updates. And maybe you want to install some older updates because maybe there was a glitch that you used to exploit that was patched in the latest update or maybe there was some kind of Christmas texture pack or Christmas um, DLC or something that's that they took out after Christmas and you want to go back to access that again or a Halloween event or something like that in an older update then you can go back with this method and install those older updates which you can't do when you're trying to download an update from PSN online and obviously if you're on a firmware that's not the latest firmware because maybe you're waiting for a jailbreak in the future so you're staying on a lower firmware and not updating your PS4. Well, in that case, you can use this to install game updates as well, because obviously you can't connect to the internet to download those updates yourself. Um, so lots of great benefits here to using this method. So, so first of all, if I haven't already said, this method is a very new method that's just come out from Jose Gonzalez. I'll link his channel in the description. He's the one who released this method. So I'll link that down below, along with all the files and programs that you'll need for this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up our USB storage device, whether that's a USB drive or external hard drive, either one will work. So you're going to grab a USB drive and you're going to want to make sure that it is formatted in XFAT format. So if you right click on it and you go to properties, you want to make sure that the file system says XFAT. If it does, that's great. If it doesn't, you'll have to reformat it. If it's NTFS or FAT32, then you'll have to right click and go to format and select the file system as XFAT and then start the uh, formatting. Now make sure you back up any data that's already on your USB drive because formatting it will erase the drive. So you have been warned. So anyway, once you have your USB drive in XFAT format, you're going to download and open this enhdd.rar. So we're going to open this up. We're going to select the folder and we're just going to copy everything that's in here into the root of our USB drive. Don't put it inside any folders in the USB drive. Just copy all the contents from this RAR archive directly into the root of your USB drive. Now, these some of these files and folders are hidden. Um, so if you copy them in and they, they disappear, don't worry, they, they have copied over. It's just that the files are hidden. So anyway, once you've got them all copied over here, we're going to go into the PKG directory. This is where you're going to put your game updates. And it already has a few package files in here as an example. So we're just going to delete those because those are not the ones that we want. So the game that I'm going to be downloading an update for is the only one I have installed on my PS4 right now. It's Days Gone, uh, which is currently on version 1.00, the base version of the game. So we're going to need to find a place to download the updates from. So what we're going to do is head on to our internet browser. And we're going to go to orbispatches.com. This is one of the best places, probably the best place right now to download game updates. There's also pkgdb.io, uh, which is another alternative place you can go to. But um, Orbis Patches has a lot more updates available on it. So if we go into orbispatches.com and I'm going to search for days gone because that's obviously the, the update that I want. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different versions of the game. There's the US version, the EU version, Australian version, Japan version, and even um, even there's two EU versions for some reason. So that happens with some games. Now, the problem is that you need to make sure that the update that you're downloading for the game is the same version. So, and it's the same title ID, which is the CUSA and then a five digit number. So it needs to be the same. So if the game is CUSA 09175, then the update has to be for CUSA 09175. If it's for 9176, then it's not going to work. So that's the problem right there. So the question is, how do you know what title ID your game is? Well, there's a couple of ways you can check. So if your game is a disc copy, then you can look on the box on the spine of the cover here you can see at the bottom, it actually says the number. It says CUSA09175 right here on this German cover. 
for the game. So that's how you can tell. It's also on the disc sometimes, not in all cases, but in most cases it's on the disc somewhere as well. So you can find it there. If you downloaded the game from the store, so it's not a physical copy, then what you can do is you can log in to the PlayStation Store on the same account that you obviously downloaded the, the game on and bought the game on. And then you can go onto My PlayStation, then go to Game Library, and this will show all your purchase content. And then let's say I was looking for the, the title ID of Black Ops 3, which is one of the games I have uh, bought here on my account. So all I'm going to do is on Google Chrome, you can do control U, hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit the U key. And that will give you the source code for the page. So when I bring this up, I can then search for uh, Black Ops by doing control F to do a search and then search for Black Ops. And then as you can see, it shows up here, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And if I just look further down on this line, you can see right here, CUSA 02624. So that's how I know if I was wanting an update for my Black Ops 3 that I've got downloaded, then I would make sure that the update I'm downloading is for 02624. And then it would work with my game. So that's how you do it there as well. So anyway, once you know which one it is, and because my copy of Days Gone is a disc copy, I can read the title ID on the spine of the case, and it's 09176. So, you know, if I was searching for it here on P PS4 Package Database, I can go to the title name search, search for Days Gone, and do a search, and then all the different title IDs come up, and mine is this one here, 09176, European version, view patches and information and then as you can see the latest update is uh, 1.70 but i want an older update unfortunately they don't have any older updates available right here on this one but on orbis patches if i go to that same one 09176 right here then as you can see it has 1.70 1.61 1.60 1.51 uh, all these different versions so i'm going to go ahead and download a really old version i'm going to download version 1.10 which is only 16 gigabytes so if i click it here so the first thing you'll notice is that it's not just one download there's multiple different parts of the update and you have to download every single part so as you can see they're split into four gigabyte chunks so you're just gonna have to download them so you know you could of course just click download like this and then that starts downloading the first one and then you can click the second one the third one the fourth one that's going to be very slow downloading it through the browser. I highly recommend that you get a download manager to do this. It's much easier. So I would highly recommend JDownloader2, which I'll link in the description. If you install this uh, download manager and run it right here, this is what it looks like. Now, if you go into the link grabber section, then all you have to do is go back to your downloads for your update and then right click on the first one and copy link address. And when you do that, JDownloader should detect that you've copied a link uh, to a download and it will actually automatically add the download in the link grabber right there. So then all I have to do is do the next one. So I can just right click, copy link address, right click, copy link address, copy link address and copy link address on all of them. So I have them all added. You don't need the Delta package, this Delta package. You do not need that. You just need piece zero and any other ones that they have. Some updates will have will have more parts than others, depending on how large the file is. So yeah, that's basically that. So now once you have all the links added in JDownloader like this, we're just going to highlight them all, right click, go to other, and we're going to move to a new package. And I'm just gonna rename this and get rid of the number at the end. And then that will just put all of the download, downloaded packages here in this one folder. They're showing up red right now because I've already downloaded them, but obviously that won't be the case for you. So all you have to do is hit the little play button in the top left and it will start downloading them. And as you can see, I've already got them all downloaded right here. The great thing about J Downloader as well is it downloads multiple parts at once. If your internet cuts out, it will pause the download and it can continue where it left off when you regain connection. So you're not going to like uh, have to restart the whole download again. So definitely use a download manager like JDownloader2. It's going to be much easier for you. So now that we have the update downloaded, we can then right click and open download directory. And then that will show us all of our files that we've downloaded. So because they were split into parts, unfortunately, 
in order to install them, we have to merge them back into one file again, uh, which is kind of an, an annoying extra step that you have to do. But, you know, it's not too big of a deal. So all we're going to do is we're going to right click. We're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder input. Then I'm just going to copy all of these parts into the input folder. Then we're going to grab this package merging tool, which again will be linked in the description. And we're going to copy that in here as well. And then we're just going to drag the input folder on top of the package merge.exe and let go. And then click run. And then this should open up and it should detect the file and start merging them. So this is just going to take all of those different parts, all four of those parts, and merge them back into one single update file. However, if the update you've downloaded only comes in one part anyway, because it's such a small update, maybe it's less than four gigabytes, then it's only going to be one part. So if the update is only one part, then obviously you don't have to do this step. But if the update is more than one part, then you are going to have to merge them back into one file. So that's what we're doing right here. Okay, so now that we have the file merged, if we go into that folder, you can see we've got one that's got dash merged at the end and it is 17.4 gigs. So it is all those different parts merged into one file. So all we need to do is copy that one, copy that file out to our USB drive and put it in the package folder. So we're just going to copy it in there. Okay, and once it's copied over, we can rename it and get rid of the dash merged at the end of the name right there, just to make sure it installs okay. And that is basically it. So at this point, we can eject the drive and plug it into our PS4. Okay, so plugging it into the PS4, nothing will happen at first. What we need to do is install two special packages that allow us to install from the USB drive. And in order to do that, we're going to go into settings. We're going to go down to system. And then we're going to go down to backup and restore. So basically on the USB drive, some one of the files we copied over to the USB drive was a backup of the PS4 from somebody else's account. And this backup contains the packages we need to use to install the updates. So all we have to do is restore this backup. But obviously, if you restore a backup from somebody else's PS4, you lose the stuff that's on your PS4. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you back up your own stuff first. So we're going to back up the PS4. We're going to say yes and yes and we're just gonna do a whole backup of the ps4 i don't have very much stuff on here right now um, i'm not gonna bother backing up days gone right here because i'm gonna be reinstalling it anyway with this when i restore this other backup so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, back up the system and that will restart the ps4 okay so the console restarts after you take the backup so we'll go back into settings back into system and then we will go back to backup and restore and restore the ps4 and then we're not going to restore the backup we just took we're going to restore this one from uh, jose gonzalez that you see right here which has the files on there that we need the thing is if you can accept losing the stuff that's on your ps4 right now and you know just build up your ps4 again from scratch after restoring this backup then you won't ever have to restore the backup again because those those two package files that you need for installing from the USB will be on your PS4 permanently now as long as you don't delete them, which is great. Um, but obviously, if you have a lot of stuff on your PS4, then you can switch between them, switch between the backups um, to go between having your normal stuff on your PS4 and having uh, access to install game updates. So what we're going to do is we're going to restore this backup right here. So we're going to restore. Yes. Okay, here we go. So we've done the backup. We can confirm and continue and as you can see we've now restored from his backup and we now have these two files on here we've got package installer pkg auto install and we have this black uh, blacked out package file here as well so these apps are essentially what we're going to use we're not going to use this one we're only going to use the auto package install but you need to keep both of these um, files on your system you can just put them inside a folder somewhere out the way when you're not using them but just make sure you don't accidentally delete one of these two apps once you've done this. Um, so now that we have these two apps on here, we can install the updates. And of course, I have to reinstall Days Gone now, which is a bit irritating, but I guess we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, so now the game's reinstalled itself. As you can see, we're still back on version uh, 1.00, no updates installed. We've got the 1.10 update on the USB. So all I'm going to do is run this uh, package auto install, even though it has the padlock symbol on it. 
This app basically runs in the background and then allows you to install package files from the USB. So if I run this, it will come up saying possibly an error or it will say, you know, update later or something. Oh, there you go. Cannot use the application. So we're just going to click OK, but it is now running in the background. If I hit the options button, you can see it says close application. And that means that it is actually running here. So we want to keep it running. And now I'm going to unplug my USB drive and plug it back in to the PS4. Okay, and now that I've done that, if you just wait a few seconds for it to detect the USB drive, there you go. As you can see, it's installing, added to downloads. And if I go into the notifications, you can see it is downloading the up update file. Or when I say downloading, it's copying it from the USB drive. So yeah, and as you can see, it says sign in to PlayStation Network and view the latest information for this application. I am not connected to PSN right now. I'm completely offline and yet I'm able to install this game update uh, via the USB. Now I know that seemed like quite a complicated setup, but what you have to bear in mind is that now that you have this setup, it's much, much easier in future. So now that you ha already have the files on your USB drive, you have these packages installed now. So whenever you want to update another game, for example, you just have to download the game update on orbispatches.com or packagedatabase.io and merge them into one file if they're larger than four gigabytes and then just put them in that package directory on the USB drive, plug it into the PS4 when you after running this and the PS4 will automatically install the update. It's as simple as that. So yeah, it took a little while there to get set up with everything, but once it's set up, it's much easier to do now in future now that you have everything ready. So I know some people will ask, well, what about games? Could you just put a game on here and install a game? or install DLC. Technically, yes, but you need to have the license for the game in order for it to run it. So because my account, if you remember, I had uh, Black Ops 3, I purchased Black Ops 3 on my account. So if, as long as I'm signed into my, my account that has a uh, Black Ops 3 license to it, then yes, I could also download the game and install it via the USB drive. But if I don't have a license for a particular game and I just try and install that game with the USB, Yes, it will install, but it will it won't run. It will have the padlock symbol like this, and it will not run the game when you try and launch it because you don't have the license for it tied to your account. So you still need to have the license for any games or DLC tied to your account in order for you to install it with the USB. That's why I'm mainly just covering game updates here because game updates don't require a license for them to install. So yeah, that's basically it. And I, again, guys, make sure that you're downloading the correct um update for your game whether it's you know if it's a us game then you need to download the us update and it has to be the right title id um otherwise yes it will install the update but it will not actually patch the game with the update if the if the update is for the wrong region or has the wrong title id okay so how are we here yep there we go we've got the 1.10 update installed if i hit options and i go to information you can see it now says we're on version 1.10 so I was able to install that update just fine. And it's clearly not the latest update. The latest update is uh, 1.70, I think. So 1.10 is a much older update, but we were able to successfully install it here. And of course, if I wanted to download the latest update 1.70, I could have done that as well. It's just much larger, so uh, it would have taken me too long to download. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, if I run the game, you can see the game is running here successfully press any button to begin i'm mainly looking for the game version somewhere oh great so days gone doesn't actually show doesn't actually show the game version that's rather irritating oh well uh, anyway though you can see it's running and as you can see from the information we are updated to 1.10 so yeah that's basically it guys that's how you can install any game updates and any package file really for the ps4 using this uh, package auto installer method via a USB drive, which is uh, very, very useful. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.